come to the next stage. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just being silly now. I don't know what's going on. I'm just having a bit of fun right now. Okay. Stage two of learning how to sing and play the guitar. You are now... Um, you're already at the point where you're listenable with your song. Now we're up to the next point. Stage two is confidence. It's all about confidence, baby. So we are going to be getting confident with our song. Right now you're listenable, so then everything should be in place. Like all of the blocks are there. Now we're going to be adding one extra block onto it, which is a strumming pattern or like or rhythm pattern is essentially the way you want to think about it. Now... With every song, there's going to be a challenge. Um, sometimes you might be copying uh, a cover of an acoustic performance, so you just got to copy that. It might be a finger picking part, so you just got to like learn the finger picking part of it. Um, finger picking, by the way, as a sidebar, finger picking is just learning the sequence of the finger picking. Uh, and once you've got the sequence of the finger picking, like it's the same thing as strumming. Um, like, say I was, like, doing Red Hot Chili Peppers. It's just... So simple, right? Um, like, that that's what finger-picking is. Finger-picking is typically just, like, one... Uh, like a like a phrase or a rhythm phrase, and you're just gonna nail that rhythm phrase. And once you get really confident with that, it's the same as drumming. So um, that's just the sidebar. Anyway, let's get back into singing and playing with confidence. Um, so every song's gonna be different depending on whether you're trying to do an acoustic one or you're trying to emulate a recording which has a band and production things like that. There's a lot of things that um, will influence your playing. Um, typically, when I look at this, um, we're gonna jump into step one which is you want to figure out the, the pattern that you want to connect to. You, you don't have to follow the exact thing that the guitarist is doing um, because sometimes listening to the guitarist in, in the recording um, is not actually the real like amazing thing. Um, like it's not the real groove of what you're trying to connect to with the song. Uh, so typically I would lean towards the bass player as the, as the person that you want to kind of follow with the rhythm that you're, you're trying to stick to. Um, that's what usually builds my strumming patterns. I usually blend the bass player and the drummer are usually like the two that I really want to like hone in on because that if I can copy what kind of rhythms they're creating, then when I add what the guitarist is doing, I usually can really like build out the rhythm structures quite clearly in the different sections and I'll prioritize. Um, this is more advanced, but I'll prioritize what I want out of each section so when i'm adding a strumming part um like you can go on ultimate guitar and it'll say up down up down 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 up um, down. like you can do that <laughs> like i'm not gonna tell you what to do um uh but like say i was playing wonderwall right i actually i'm, I'm not gonna lie i have no idea how wonderwall goes if i play wonderwall i'm going like this Now you can hear that has a bit of like a That's how I'm thinking about it when I'm playing it. I'm not being like, oh yeah. So that that's um when it comes to strumming patterns, uh typically because I'm trying to tell you how I think about things, that's how I think about things. Um, if you want to just do the guitar part, copy the guitar part, totally do it. There's a lot of great resources online, especially when you're learning songs. They will have the exact way to play the recording of the guitar part. Um, but I'm telling you from a perspective of how do I connect with people? Typically, that's how I connect with people. I focus on the, the bass and the drums, and that's what drives the rhythm connection, how to add strumming to a song that I want to sing and play. So while I'm at the stage of listenable, I want to add strumming. That's what I will think about. Now... Step two is to begin the process of implementing the strumming pattern that you are wanting to do. So let's go over here. Um, so uh, we're going to go back to shotgun. Um, so obviously shotgun, I was just doing one strum. Now, if I want to do the strumming part to shotgun, I, like typically if I'm doing it. Uh, 
that's the core root groove. Um, and when it comes to strumming patterns, um, you might add an embellishment, but you just want to get the core groove. So I'm going bump, ba da, bump, 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 bump. So that bump, bump, bump. Bump. That's that's the that's the core groove that I'm going for, and then I kind of just add little stuff in between. So that's the that's the rhythm pattern that I want to go for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start playing that pattern, but I'm not going to be playing the chords. I'm just going to start working on the right hand. So I'm going to sing the song while strumming with the right hand, um, and then that's how I'm going to begin connecting my. You want to go uh, connect your vocal to your right hand, and then the next step after that will obviously be adding your left hand, which is the chord shapes. So I'd be like, Bone grown alligator, see you later. Gotta hit the road. Home grown alligator, see you later. Gotta hit the road. Gotta hit the road. Something changed in the atmosphere. Architecture unfamiliar. I could get used to this. And now once I'm really confident with my right hand and my vocal, I'll be like, okay, now let's move to step three, which is you're going to start adding those chord changes that you already know to the strumming pattern. Now, if you're a beginner guitarist, um, this might be a bit harder for you because the time that you have between changing chords is always very short. And sometimes when you're just doing the homegrown alligator, see you, you got, a, you got a lot of time to move over to the next chord. Uh, so that, that's pretty handy. Uh, now, if you start adding strumming patterns, you're going to get kind of stuck. But as long as you don't disrespect the right hand, this is really, really critical, right? Do not take away from the things that you have already done. If you start adding strumming patterns, do not let the strumming patterns take away from what you have done. If you have achieved listenable and then you start adding strumming patterns and now you are no longer listenable, you are no longer listenable. Pretty simple, right? So if the strumming pattern that you are doing is now no longer servicing the, the main thing that you already achieved, which was listenable, that means you need to go back and really nail it, okay? Nail the rhythm with the vocal. And like, get that, like really practice that. You gotta get that so down. Um, I can't stress that enough because the last thing you wanna do is be the guy or girl who's going, homegrown alligator, see you later. Gotta hit the road. Gotta hit the road. Something changing the atmosphere, architecture, familiar. I can get you. Like, that is so painful. It was painful for me to do. Uh, seriously, that, that's, don't do that. Please don't do that. That, the, you just, as soon as you're doing that, that means you go back a step and then really lock it in. Anytime that you're strumming through chords, I don't actually care because if you're, I don't care if you miss make like you miss the chords. Don't miss the right hand. Seriously. When I when I talk about vocal rhythm, rhythm is everything. Just understand it. Vocal rhythm is king and then the next rhythm element is your right hand. Your left hand doesn't matter. Your the melody note doesn't matter. The lyrics don't matter. You can bomb on them and people will forgive you. You mess up the rhythm, people are like please just stop. When is this ending? You mess up rhythms and, and the song's done. You cannot recover a bad rhythm. I mean, you can. You can recover anything. You just keep going. It's jazz. But um, seriously, just you do not want to mess with the rhythm. The rhythm is going to kill you. So if anything that is written on my tombstone is like rhythm is king. <laughs> uh, anyway, so, so what I want you to do is say worst case scenario, you're really struggling to get these chord changes down. Cause obviously step three is just you going, homegrown alligator, see you later. Gotta hit the road, gotta hit the road. Something changing the atmosphere, architecture unfamiliar. I could get used to this. Time flies by in the yellow green. Like that, that's what I'm doing, right? That is step three. If you can get to step three, you're on fire. Now, if you can't get that right and you can only like half get it right, don't feel bad. Like you don't need to nail everything. Um, and like, this is a journey. You're just gonna keep getting, some songs will be easy, some songs won't. And when you get really good at one song, that might have, that will have a trickle effect on all the other songs, which we will chat about on step four. Um, 
Now, if you're going to be struggle through the strong, struggle through the song, don't worry about struggling. Enjoy the struggle, but just don't ruin your right hand. So you'd be like, homegrown alligator, see you later. Gotta hit the road, gotta, gotta hit the road. Something changed in the atmosphere, architecture unfamiliar. I could get used to this. Time flies by in the yellow and green. Stick around and you'll see what I mean. So you can see like half the time I'm playing chords, half the time I'm not. Um, some people be like, wow, that's stylistically cool. It's like, I don't know. But if you're going to crash and burn on the chords, crash and burn on the chords, but don't crash and burn on the on on the rhythm. Don't let your right hand fall apart. If you're unsure about the chords, don't stop your right hand. Keep plowing through the song. Um, I'm telling you right now, I have played many songs that I've completely bombed. I have actually guessed chord progressions. I didn't even know the chord progression. And I just was so convicted in the timing and I knew the vocal rhythm that I had the whole crowd singing the whole song, vibing, dancing, just screaming the lyrics to a song I had no idea how it went. I was just, I would just no clue, absolutely no clue, but they knew the words and they knew the vocal rhythm. And I just like kind of followed their vocal rhythm and just kind of played chord changes and it worked. Um, that's how much chords don't matter. Like they just seriously don't. Um, if you don't mess with people's timing and you allow the vocal rhythm to be what it is, you're good. Harmonic backing, everything can just completely go down the drain. That's why you hear me rearrange all the harmonies. No one really gets mad at me. Um, and you'll hear great songs being rearranged completely. And you're like, wow, that's so cool. So if you're wondering why that is, I just wanted to really iterate. Step three is quite important in the sense that that is a really, really big red flag for most players. They will be like, they'll add the chord changes and they will overemphasize that the chord changes are important. They are not important. If you crash and burn on chord changes, we are all good. Um, just keep getting better at it and, and it's great. But do not let it make you not listenable. As soon as the chord changes are messing with your listenability, then throw them away. They, we don't want them. Go back, get back into your group, then come back and add the chords again. That's it. Please, listenable is king. All right. Now, step four, do it a lot. Record yourself and uh, find where the, the rhythms are sucky. Uh, and then, yeah, and make and make it all listenable. So... If you get to the point where you're like, oh, my chord changes are pretty horrible, um, then that means record it. Find where that spot is and then just iron that baby out. Like if it's a vocal thing that is messing with your rhythm, go and just sit on that spot and just really nail it and then just move on a little bit, like five five seconds at a time. If it, if it needs to be one second at a time, uh, when I was learning Neon by John Mayer, that's how it went. You know, it was just like a little bit at a time and then eventually you're good. And you're like, yes, I got there. Finally. Woo. Um, but yeah. So step four, record yourself, do it a lot. And then um, you should get better and better at that. So seriously, I have this little inspirational thing. At this point, you should be super proud of yourself. Woo. And you should be. It's very hard to get here. So take the wins as they come and keep trying. Wow. Scripting Luan is very motivational. <laughs> Thank you. I love this. I love this. <laughs> I try so hard. Anyway, good luck, y'all. Uh, hopefully, this was good information and you can apply it to some of the songs you've been working on. Now, let's move over to step three, which is arrangement. And I can't wait to talk to you about that one because that is a very, very, very fun one. All right. See you guys in the next video.